My name is Gregory Disney Lagers. I went to Air Force Institute of Technology and Defense Acquisition University, where I studied IT and project management. From that, pretty much, I started Linux development for secure systems, and that's where Mantra comes to play. Is I developed Mantra pretty much to ensure that we, any user could have a secure virtualized platform to test and be able to pretty much, at the end of this, their test case, shut it down, flush it. If they have to redeploy an OVF, they can redeploy an OVF, or you could restart your session pretty much exactly. That was the art of uh, sandboxing through LXC. Um, so pretty much about me a little bit more is I am a platform security engineer at High Trust. High Trust builds cloud security and compliance testing, uh, pretty much appliance. And what I do is I use Mantra to break it. <laughs> I go in and I punch it in the face every day. <laughs> that is my job. So <clears throat> what I have to do is pretty much figure out what a black hat would do to this system. And that is, in theory, seems like it would be more <laughs> difficult than it is, but it, in reality, being a black hat is, I want credentials, I want to be able to take over everything. That's all a black hat really wants, is the data from that. So what we do is we pretty much guarantee the security of different appliances inside of your vCloud, so I have to make sure that through those, they cannot attack our appliance. So what is Mantra OS? Mantra OS is a virtualized attack platform designed around uh, the Mantra Security Toolkit and the OWASP WTE repository. The uh, Security Toolkit was developed by Git Mantra, which is ABI, and uh, OWASP WTE repository is Matt Teresos. And in the combination of those two, we pretty much created an independent OS. Mantra OS was developed for SCAP testing and professional pen testing environment, and it's been really optimized over the last year and a half for pretty much virtual environments. It went from pretty much a distribution to a virtual appliance in over a year for the usage of anybody that wants to, because also on our user base, 75% of Mantra instances are virtualized. So it seemed to me as the best route to go was to virtualize it even further to guarantee integration between desktops and the VMware ecosystem. Um, it is available in ISO and OVF, which is ASNI standard, so it fits compliance in that sense. Um, how I implemented Mantra OS into High Trust was pretty much through, they hired me in and they said, we want security in QA. So I said, okay. So pretty much, I decided Mantra would be my best course because I knew it inside out because I was the developer of it. And from there, I had to implement SCAP and other testing protocols, so HIPAA compliance, PCI compliance, different compliance testing and security. So when we send it out to a customer and they say, we help them keep compliance, our product itself is compliant. Um, pretty much, we also use it for vulnerability verification testing through its Metasploit and other backends that pretty much exploit. <laughs> it, I deployed it through vCenter and it, it's pretty much, you'll see on the demo how it's integrated with the desktop environment of VMware. So I, re I designed from the kernel level up. The first thing I did was give it the GR security kernel patch, which the kernel patch actually gives it pretty much like a, the module libsec comp, gives it extra security so you can't do bad things to the server itself. I also gave OpenVZ kernel, which acts through dispatch as a virtualization job task handler. And I used the Gianetti cluster with KVM to ensure that if you wanted to build this off into a team server, you could easily do that and have multiple virtual instances based off the guest file system of Mantra OS. So that would make it easier for, in an enterprise situation, for testers to use it. Uh, Mantra OS has currently running three containers and two sandboxes on every desktop instance that is running. 
So I used OpenVZ as a container controller for LXC. And then last year's pretty much the 1.0 of Mantra OS had a sandbox, but then I said, we can go further with this. So what I did is I took that, pretty much that dbus hook, and I made it into when it goes to light DM, it pretty much goes the whole desktop is sandbox. And then it's pretty much controlled through libvirt, through glib. Glibc ensures that any of the C compiled programs are sandboxed and are pretty much stored in temp and flushed at shutdown. So this is the virtual core. It's quite large for a virtual core. Um, basically, below EFI and BIOS is bare metal, and that doesn't particularly matter in this case. So there's EFI, BIOS. I use Grub2, the Gramps, and uh, OpenVZ kernel. But then it's the Gianetti, and the VZ control talks via the Gianetti cluster to KVM2. And then libvirt ensures that the loop is constant. And libdistatch is pretty much the PBS end of it for the LXC. So when the task is called, like such as shutdown, when you have this many virtual processes running, shutting down is actually quite a task because it has to tell each of those virtual instances it has to shut down. So pretty much libdispatch goes through all of those layers and sends initiative zero or initiative one, whatever it may be, to give it the task of shutting down. So I will show in a demo how the IPS is working, but uh, I gave IDS an IPS solution. The IDS is Suricata, which is like Snort, but a uh, open CL. So it gives you a lot larger dynamic of workspace of monitoring your IDS. I also use Artillery and Honey for my IPS. And what that does is actually enables the honey is set to make it look like an IIS server, and artillery gives it fake MS RPC ports and all that stuff to make it literally look like an IIS server. Uh, also, it has container-based sandboxing, which I covered. Then I also implemented AppArmor and SE Linux. So if something was to go wrong, like uh, say AppArmor would protect Firefox because if you're running like a social engineering, you don't want to get your browser per se hooked, AppArmor will try to protect that. Um, so this is the security audit toolkit that I pretty much worked out the, with WTE with Matt. It's Zap, Burp, Multi Ego, Metasploit, Armitage, which Armitage slash MSF GUI, uh, and ZenMap, which is NMAP's GUI. Also, I asked in the last week Matt to add XSR, which is like Xenotex project, but for Linux. Um, we have for packet capture, EtherCap and Wireshark. EtherCap is pretty much, they're both PCAP handlers. But what also, this also helps us benefit us by showing us what happens to the IDS IPS when it is uh, properly running. We have, for web application scanners, we have Skipfish, Nikito, and Gryari. SQL injection, we have SQL brute, SQL map, and SQL map integration. Intel collection, multi ego. Now the fun part, we actually get to hack some stuff. As you can see on this one that I already set up a scan. This is a website hosted by Tumblr, so you might not want to use Tumblr after seeing this, but <laughs> It has cross-site scripting, massive amount of possible SQL injectable points. After testing it, I can tell you a fact straight out, it uses Oracle database, even though it's showing Postgres and Hypersonic. And pretty much with the SQL injection and the cross-site scripting, this site is one of the more vulnerable ones I could find, so I thought it was ideal for demoing. So pretty much Zap I use as my preliminary uh, scanner to see what I can do to this, any application I'm scanning. So what I did is pretty much now I'm going to do is a SQL map injection of the Oracle perimeter and set the database management software to Oracle so that 
hopefully in theory we can get some data out of that. So pretty much this is telling it I'm using the database, I have to add a D to that, but a database to Oracle and Tamper, I'm going to use the Tamper between to ensure that I can uh, get in. Tampering, pretty much a SQL map, I feel, ah, that's not good. Oh, I ran out of sudo, that's why. Okay, so pretty much it's going to try to inject into this uh, photo. Why this photo is particularly vulnerable is they are all reflective values inside their database. So when I inject the photo itself, I'm actually doing reflective injection into their Oracle database. Um, pretty much, as you can see, there's frames detected and all that, which means it's pretty bad. <laughs> Um, when it injects in, that will be, we'll be able to get keys and a couple other things, but I don't think it's going to work right now. Um, there is Nikito. Which is going to try to do the scan. And as you can see, it's already finding fun little Tumblr stuff inside the contents. Now, with this, pretty much we can take some of the data that we found from Zap and other things, like such as Nikito. At the end of this, we have to generate some report because people are going to have to eventually be able to digest down this information in theory. And at that point, we have to figure out how do we can take all of that information, that information, plus other tools at use, and how we can make that into a collective information for to share. So how I personally did it was everything here is inside the virtual appliance because it can move between the desktops. So I can actually take the information I have found and pretty much move it to my Mac on its desktop and write a report so that it's no bouncing between, no emails, none of that, trying to get two devices working at the same time. Um, there's also, on the other half, when you're trying to, such as, see what's going on. When you're running an attack, I like to usually keep a browser up to see if I'm knocking it down. Like, SQL injection, if it's hitting the wrong point, it can cause a denial of service because there's just a lot of traffic going on. You could be making thousands of requests. And so usually I monitor the website to make sure that it's not down. Because <laughs> if it's down, and anything I collect out of it is going to be pretty much lost because it's going to be bad. If it's equals injects and it's down, it's going to give me bad data. Simple as that. So I was ensure that. Um, some other things that users should be aware of is pretty much Mantra originally came with Tor, but because of the large security risk of Tor, since it's been used as a CNC and other bad things have been going through it, it became a decision of. When, I'm when it's being implemented into a enterprise situation, do you really want Tor? Right now, Tor is a backdoor to a lot of bad things. So it came as a decision, no, we're not going to implement that anymore because it does bad things. So what at the end result is your IP does not change. This does not have proxy anymore, but your actual identity as a service has been modified. This never will 
very rarely show up as a proper Linux service. So the idea of that is if it was to be fingerprinted by some, like an IDS or IPS, it would pretty much not be able to figure out what you are. So this is what it looks like before it actually has the IPS running. It only a few services, GDO map, pretty much a squid proxy service, and a couple other things running around. And now we will rerun that last scan. Yes. Suddenly I have a lot more ports open. <laughs> the, there is no way after artillery is running that you could positively fingerprint this service. Because when it runs, it's going to give such a large strings of, for the fingerprinting service on the other end, it won't be able to detect. Um, past that, we, Suricata's, as you can see on the other end, pretty much, uh, it's resetting the connections every time the Nmap server is running through. So when we attacking, pretty much fingerprinting it by a port scan, it can't actually do that. And also I added port scan attack defender. So if there's an active port scan, eventually, if you keep on running it over and over and over and over again on it, it becomes not available. The host is down to that user. They cannot see it. So the theory is if you were able to breach into a network and they were trying to figure out what you are doing while you're running this, you could they would never be able to per se figure out who you are, where you are, your geo, your geo IP location, because even if, the, well, I guess they would be able to find a geo IP, but everything else, they pretty much would be looking for a Windows box, an IIS server, which is not the case at all. And the idea is try to be a chameleon. It's your only way to pretty much send out flares and try to protect yourself when you breach a network, because there's one thing they want to do is kick you off the network when you're not supposed to be there. And as you can see, this is now injectable by 20 columns and pretty much it has order by technique. So the database is very vulnerable to SQL injection, you know, as you can see. SQL map is great for enterprise solutions because it automates it out to a point that if you have a SQLite database that's called session.sqlite, you succeeded in the test, and if you do not, you failed. It's pretty simplistic, and then you can see what data you actually exfiltrated. Um, let's see. There's also other tools included, such as Burp, um, Armitage, and all of that. But, So, at this point, does anybody have any questions? <laughs> um, so let's talk cross-site scripting then. Okay, it's not on this one. Um, much out of things to say. So this is Mantra. For the CTF and bug bounty, I highly recommend this tool set. I've used it for bug bounties multiple times. Um, it, I've been able to breach Google, Twitter once, <laughs> and pretty much everything you need to do bug bounties and everything else that you would want to do you could do with this operating system and be completely virtualized, sandbox, and secure while you're running these attacks. 
And that's the whole idea of Mantra, is to sum up as a tool that is virtualized for attacking. And then collecting that data and being able to disseminate it down. Because majority, unless you're going for Black Hat, which by all means should just use Backtrack, it pretty much means use this for your information that you need to give to pretty much your higher ups. Be like, so I breached our site, this is how I did it. And that's what I use Mantra for. I think that's about all I have. So any questions? I'm pretty much out of, of things to say, so. How is it different from Backtrack? Pretty much uh, the browser itself is integrated as, uh, the browser itself is integrated with the Mantra Toolkit. And then on top of that, the tools are part of the WTE repository, which are intent to be more stable than, per se, Backtrack, which uses whatever people are submitting each year. And that, the idea is to give you a stable and automatable operating system. Uh, OWASP.org, Mantra OS, that's where the virtual points, and there's also the ISOs on SourceForge. Okay. Okay, you activate artillery mode. Are there any, any ones or any others? What was that? Uh, you activate artillery mode, so in IPS. So my question is, is are there any other modes or any other yeah, you can switch it around. Uh, if you don't want to be an IIS server, you could be an Apache. The reason I chose something that was not was because if you can spoof being a Windows server versus being spoofing an Apache server, they're going to be looking for something completely different than the beast at hand. They're going to be looking for this IIS server that's attacking, but in reality, it's a Linux and Gen X uh, squid server attacking. Yeah, it looks, looks really cool. Um, and you said like last year, year and a half, you worked on it. I mean, how often do you do updates? What's a long-term plan, if there is any? <laughs> there is. Um, we have an annual release plan. Technically, each one is under a theory long-term support. I, every year I do a revision because things do change, and the Linux kernel is an ever-expansive project that is always growing. So every summer, I pretty much go through a release cycle, and then it releases about October every year. Any more questions?